Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Bartlett and I'm excited to share that as of the September release, the Volumetric Lattice tool will come out of Tech Preview and will become, like any other tool, within the product design extension. Since its initial release in January, the team has been working hard to develop and improve the command and we've made some great progress. In this video, we'll be looking at the Volumetric Lattice tool, highlighting some of the new features and demonstrating how you can use the tool in your projects. To access the tool, you will need the product design extension. To enable it, you need to click the extension button in the toolbar, select product design from the list, and choose your access option. If you have not used the extension before, you could try the seven day free trial. Once enabled, you should be able to see the command in the design workspace underneath the modify tab. For this demonstration, I'll be using this hinge bracket. I'll be additively manufacturing this part in stainless steel, and therefore I want to apply a lattice structure to reduce material used and reduce the overall mass. First, I need to make some changes to make it more suitable for the additive process. Using lattice structures is just one aspect of the design for additive manufacture or DFAM process, but we also need to make other considerations. For example, how can I reduce, or even better, completely remove overhangs from our part? This would mean we won't need to add excess support structures, which can be really difficult to remove when working with metals. From my experience, I think this is the best orientation to print this part. To further reduce overhangs, you can see I've created a second version of the design, in which I've turned the hole into a diamond. This way, I can print the part with no support structures, supporting the top of that hole. Then, during the post-processing of this part, I can use a CNC milling machine to mill that diamond into a hole. Taking this approach ensures the dimensions of the resulting hole is within tolerance and to a high surface finish. These hybrid workflows are common when working with metal additive processes and made easy in Fusion 360 with a manufacturing environment that supports both additive and subtractive toolpathing. I've also created this piece of construction geometry, which will act as a placeholder for the rods that fit through the hole. You'll see why I've done this later on. Now we have our part prepared, we can apply the lattice structure by selecting the volumetric lattice command under the modify tab. To use the tool, we need to select a target body like so. This can be either a solid B-Rep body or a mesh body. Fusion 360 will only allow you to apply one volumetric lattice per component. And we can see the volumetric lattice definition now appears in the browser. This works in a similar way to sheet metal or plastic rules that you might be familiar with. Next, we need to apply a cell shape. We have added a number of predefined and commonly used cells for you to utilize in your projects, including the gyroid cell and the X cell. As you can see, the volumetric approach to lattice generation is extremely quick. This approach allows you to design parts faster, allowing for more iterations of the design and ultimately better design outcomes. We've also added the ability to define your own cell structures using geometry from the rest of Fusion 360. This includes sketch objects and other bodies. We've made it extremely easy to design 2.5D structures. If you select a sketch that's on a single plane, you can see that an extruded version of the sketch is used to fill the part. And what's really cool is if we make changes to our sketch, we can see the lattice structure update in real time. So I'll go back in and edit our lattice definition and show how we can create 3D cell structures. Here, I have designed a custom cell using both sketch lines and 3D B-Rep bodies. I can easily select the geometry and see the cell structures fill my part. I think this is a really cool feature. It makes designing custom cells for lattice structures easier than ever before, using tools that you are already familiar with and it gives you, as the designer or engineer, complete design freedom of your structure. 
For this part, however, I will just stick with the gyroid cell structure. We're able to scale our structure both uniformly and non-uniformly. And we can also move the lattice within the boundary geometry. This makes aligning cells to the surface of parts really easy. Next, we have the Solidity tab. In this tab, we have control over the solidity or density of our lattice. We're able to specify a uniform density using this slider. Or we can define a gradient of solidity throughout the part using the gradient along path option. We can select an edge or a sketch line and we will see a gradient of solidity defined by points along that line. We're able to define the solidity at these points using this manipulator. And we can even move the points along the path for even finer control of the gradient. I think using these in -scene manipulators to define these properties makes designing components with complex, spatially varying properties really intuitive. Finally, we have the offset tab. And here we can define specific regions of higher density. We can select faces, edges, sketch objects, or other bodies to set an offset region. We can control the thickness of this region and the solidity of this region. We can also change the blend distance, which defines the gradient between the solidity within the offset region and the background solidity we set in the solidity tab. This tab can be really valuable for creating skins for your latticed parts. And for this, selection filters can be extremely useful. I'm going to go to select in the toolbar and under selection filters, I'll unselect everything except body faces. This way, when I click and drag over my part, it will automatically select all of the faces. We now have created an offset region from every face on the body and I'll specify the thickness to two mil. And now we have a part with a solid skin and a gyroid lattice structure inside. For this part, however, I want to leave some of the lattice structure showing. So I'm going to deselect some of the faces purely for aesthetic reasons. It's also worth mentioning, you can add extra offset regions by pressing this plus icon. You can set its own thickness, its own blend distance, and its own solidity. And to delete it, you just press the X icon. Once we're happy with our design, we can just press OK. If we want to make changes to our design, we can right click on the lattice definition underneath the component and select Edit Volumetric Lattice. We're now also able to unassign and reassign lattice definitions to a body. And to do this, you can right click on the body and select unassign volumetric lattice or assign volumetric lattice. And if we want to understand the properties of a part a little bit better, we can right click on the body, select properties, and we can see more information about the part, including the volume and the center of mass of the latticed body. This is just an estimation, but it can be extremely valuable when comparing design iterations. The next step is to manufacture our design, and there are two current workflows to go about this. One method is to create a mesh out of the volumetric lattice, which can be done by right-clicking on the body, selecting Create Mesh. We can change the refinement options and then generate the mesh by pressing OK. Once complete, we can use all of the tools in the mesh workspace to make any changes that may be needed, and then take the part either into the manufacturing workspace or export it to a different print preparation tool, for example, NetFab. However, the meshing process can have slight inaccuracies. And so we've implemented another approach, which I think is really cool. Instead of creating a mesh, we can take the component with the volumetric information 
directly into the manufacturing space. We can slice bodies with volumetric information without the need to create a mesh, which makes the design to manufacture process much smoother. Currently, bodies with volumetric information are only able to be used in additive setups. But this is a powerful new feature added by the team and highlights the benefits of an integrated CAD and CAM solution. I'll be printing this part on the one-click metal M-Print Plus machine here in the Autodesk Technology Center in Birmingham, the UK. So I'll create a new setup and select the M-Print Plus machine. I want to add some volume supports to the bottom of the part in order to hold it to the bill plate. And I can do that as I would with any other part. Finally, I can generate a toolpath, inspect it, and create a machine build file, which I can pass to the mprint plus to manufacture. So this has been an introduction to the volumetric lattice tool that is now available within the product design extension for Fusion 360, and an overview of all the progress that we've made over the past few months. We are continuing to develop this tool and continuing to democratize volumetric modeling for Fusion 360 users. I hope you have found this video useful and I cannot wait to see how this tool is used by the community. Thank you very much for watching and if you have any questions, please reach out in the comments or on the forums. Thank you.